Now, the South African Council of Churches has expressed concern at the seemingly brewing tensions between some South African citizens and so-called foreign nationals living and working in the country. These tensions played out into clashes that played out between residents calling themselves the Alex de Dula movement and foreign nationals running businesses in Alexandra Township earlier this week. Yesterday, the Council of Churches launched the establishment of a national dialogue on foreign nationals working in South Africa, following the utterances from members of society for the removal of all foreign nationals from South Africa with immediate effect. To help us unpack some of these developments, we are joined by the General Secretary of the South African Council of Churches, Bishop Malusi Mpulwana. Unfortunately, as we say, due to load shedding at the Bishop's residence this morning, the interview will be done telephonically, but we're so glad that we have got him. Bishop, thank you and good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, firstly, uh, Bishop, what exactly did the SA Council of Churches launch yesterday, and what does it seek to achieve? What we did, uh, the president of the South End Council of Churches, Archbishop Makoma, um, um, his, his convener of a process that we are hoping will suffice every concern that any South African has about the matter of South African, non South Africans in our communities and in our economy. And that we should then address all those issues in a process that is structured, that includes and involves all stakeholders, including government. Uh, we are hoping that between today and the end of March, um, anyone, any South African who has got anything to say, good or bad, about non South Africans in our community, we made submissions. Uh, these submissions will all be processed. Uh, uh, we have given a special web, sorry, a email address for this that it says nation building at sacc.org.za, through which people can make submissions. I should say that since we announced this intention in January, We've already received a fair amount of opinions from people, and we're trying to make that a much more structured, organized way of receiving them. And what we plan to do is that once we receive all the submissions that people have, we'll categorize them and group them according to the issues that they are raising. And then we will try and have meetings or conversations with those categories of issues. We will also have in independent our own address to specific organizations that we think are important, community organizations, uh, you know, even labor organizations, and as well as uh, employer organizations, because there are allegations about employers taking uh, foreign nationals in order to avoid, uh, you know, working with South Africans. All those things must be started to be put to the same place. We're conducting at the same time research that really goes deep into the specific so that we have an evidence-based uh, body of information that will then bring to bear. And ultimately, uh, you know, after all these processes, we shall have a big plenary where all those that have been participating will then have a direct voice and will deal with these things in a way that brings solutions. The submissions we're asking yeah. for mm. are solution-based submissions. Yeah. And, and Bishop, and then what? Because, you know, at the, at the moment, I mean, what we're seeing that's happening in the streets right now as we speak, it's, it's already a, a, a boiling cauldron where there are huge issues. People, South Africans, are unemployed and poor and starving, um, then foreign nationals are being targeted at the same time. And this is, a, uh, this is a, a very, very difficult situation to handle. And I can imagine with everything that you're explaining right now, this is going to take some time. Then you'll reach a conclusion. And then what? I mean, you know, this is, this is more of a, a government issue that needs to come in and set secure boundaries as to, you know, with, and the reality is when I talk about boundaries, we have very, very loose borders, and people are coming in, and this is the reality. And so people are not distinguishing between who is legally here and who's illegally here. It's very hard to rationalize at a time like this. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, actually, I should say that there is no way 
you can have a breath of hearing you. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I can hear you, Bishop. There, there, there is no way we can deal with this matter without at the same time dealing with the need for serious economic transformation. We have, uh, this is one of three, by the way, this is one of it's what we call the trilogy of public interventions, national interventions. And one is dealing with the matter of foreign nationals, the second one is dealing with economic transformation. We have a panel of about a dozen economists that are currently working with us to answer the question of what is it, what, can you, what kind of economic architecture will be able to do almost a Marshall Plan to absorb the 77, 77% unemployed young people in our, in our society. And that brings what we call the excluded majority into productive, the productive economy. And by that, uh, we, we, then that, that, that's the other thing. And of course, this is a policy issue. And we expect that uh, once these uh, uh, processes that are doing the economic transformation also will come into the public domain, we'll then put these before South Africans, including government. The third one is what we call a nation building initiative, which really focuses on the fact that we have a country in common, but we do not have a nation together. Hmm. There is no such a thing as a South African nation. And as long as we have that as a problem, it means that we are all uh, dealing with uh, personal, personalized interests, uh, whether by group, by ethnicity, by race, or whatever categories we are, whether it's labor union, but we're not thinking about ourselves as a nation. We're thinking about ourselves as a that interest group. And so that's the third part. But key right now is dealing with this matter in the relation to the economy. And that's why it goes end in end with the economy transformation agenda. Because if I'm told, I'm one of the 77% unemployed young people, I'm told you're unemployed because that industry is employing foreigners. Just get rid of them and you'll get your job. You know, what's going to stop me? They wake up in the morning, they see the sun rising, they see the sun setting, nothing happens in their lives, and there is no hope. And, and that's why we, it therefore develops what we call the scarcity mentality, that things are so scarce that you've got to preserve what you have and you try to grab from the next person. You know, and the thing is, is that this, this is uh, something that has been around for so long. I mean, this is not anything new to South Africa. In fact, it's something that, I mean, if we go back years, I'm trying to remember the year that we, we had and there was, you know, the, 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 the visuals of, of, uh, of a foreign national being burnt in the streets of a township. I mean, this is, you know, this is something that unfortunately has been carrying on and on and on. Um, the tensions around non-South African citizens in society. How do we address this? Um, it is, it's such a big problem. It really is a big issue that has just gotten worse and worse and worse. How do we talk about it? I mean, how do we get to the root of, of saying, we can all live and work together, but there are not enough jobs to go around. And the reality is, is that this does create tensions. It is our hope. It is our hope that, uh, that South Africans will actually come through. This is a very special appeal. Come through, say what you know. At every part of the country, let's know what is there and let's talk about it. And let's find solutions. Everything, there is no problem that doesn't have a solution at all. Do you think that the sentiments shared by some South Africans around having to share the country's resources with non-South African citizens are justified, uh, especially in the light of, of, of the poverty and unemployment around South African nationals? Um, I am loath to make, to, pronounce, to make any pronouncements at all uh, because uh, I don't want to appear to prejudge anything. Of our purpose is to have South Africans heard and their positions uh, articulated, and then we process them and engage them. Mm -hmm. So with the use of the word foreign nationals, I know you also have a problem with that. Um, wh what is the issue with the term foreign nationals? Perhaps you can explain what it was you didn't like. <laughs> oh, well, it's actually one of our, the, 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 the head of the research uh, institutes we're working with, uh, Professor Cheryl Hendricks, he challenged me on this. <laughs> she said, uh, how, how can you see somebody is foreign and a national at the same time? <laughs> 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 and so 
we thought, well, we might as well just talk about um, non-South Africans who are in our in our society, in our economy. I mean, they are in our society. They have married our 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 our, house, our our sons and our daughters. They have got children here. They go to our schools. They are in our society. They are in our in our economy. They are selling stuff. They do all kinds of things. These things must and we must get to the bottom of them. We need to have the people that are in the you know informal in, 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 informal trade in business must say what their experiences are. Everyone must speak. We want everyone's voice to be heard. And that's very important for us because once you have got all the voices and you are processing them and you've got government in the place, you've got the various law enforcement, you've got home affairs, you've got a trading industry, you've got everyone, foreign affairs, they must all say where they stand. And then we will find solutions. Mm, mm. You know, I, I, th I was relaying an incident, um, rem uh, you know, it's just, it's just coming back to me now. This was in 2008 when we saw those, those clashes taking place in, in Dipsluit. And I think it was at that time there were close to uh, 10 foreign nationals that were actually killed at that time. No, 22 people were actually killed at that time. Um, and this was all blamed on the xenophobic violence. This was in 2008 when that body was set alight and people were standing by laughing while this was happening. So this is nothing new, Bishop. And, you know, my, my fear is... is is talking about it again and and you know the the the, the non-action from government with regard to this i know that you know government is in a difficult position we understand that but it's just so hard when you can actually understand the root causes of the tensions and the frustrations of south africans you can um, and yet nothing seems to be done about it so i ask you what role should government be playing? I know that you, you did say, you know, that they need to be involved as well. But what do you want to see coming from them? I'm looking for, I'm looking for, we, we want to present to them exactly what we're hearing from, from South Africans. We don't want to say, we don't want to assume uh, because we've heard what we've heard. I want somebody to say, I am from Operation Dula. And here is our experience, here's what we've seen, here's what we're complaining about, and we'll put this to government, here's what they are saying, what are you doing about it, what are the solutions, what's going to happen by uh, next month in relation to this matter. Mm -hmm. well, That's what we're talking about. So, in other words, we're creating a process for South Africans to deal with this only issue that can only just flare up and flare up and people die and nobody's doing anything about it. Yeah. Well, Bishop, let's give out some details because um, I know that there is, um, uh, um, uh, this is where you want to get the public involved. We need them to talk. How do they, how do they get involved in something like this? They write emails to Nation Building. It's all one word, no case, small letters. Nation Building at SACC.org. Dot that a nation building at SACC. We are going to be activating a WhatsApp platform also for this um, uh, in the next week that let people can use because not everybody does emails. Right, let's do that. Thank you so much for talking to us, Bishop. So let me repeat that again. It's nation building at sacc.org.za. Email. This is uh, forming part of a dialogue. It's a nation building initiative. Um, of healing and reconciliation for a common identity, the One Identity South Africa campaign. And uh, talking to us about that, we had the, uh, the Bishop, uh, Malusi Mpolwana, talking to us. So thanks again to the Bishop for his time.